OK, here we've got a quadratic equation. It's the general type, all three terms are there, so it's not a special case. So the first thing you think about is, will this factorise? So you go off and do a little grid. So 2x squared, I'm going to need an x and a 2x to make that 2x squared. And to make this minus 3, well, it could be 1 and minus 3. It could be lots of things. But whichever way you try and split up that minus 3, uh, you never seem to be able to get this minus 2x. So here's a case of a quadratic equation. It does have solutions, uh, we'll find that out later, but it turns out that we can't solve this one because it doesn't uh, by factorising, because it doesn't factorise nicely. So um, we go to our, our backup plan, and our backup plan is to apply the quadratic formula, which you need to learn. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is not in the formula booklet, you have to learn that. When applying it, you have to set up the values of a and b and c. So in this case, the number of x squared is a, which is 2. b, which is um, the, uh, the coefficient of x, is minus 2. Remember, the minuses are attached to the values that follow them, so c is minus 3. So putting the values in, we get minus b is plus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared is minus 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. And notice what I've done with the brackets there. First of all, notice the square root goes across everything. That's really important. And for these multiplications, which may have ne negative numbers in, I recommend putting everything in in brackets because then you'll be able to deal with the minus signs correctly. And remember, you're doing this in core one without a calculator. So I've done the top, I've done the square root, I've got to my 4ac, so I've got to do all over 2 times a, which is 2 times brackets 2. And remember that these were all multiplications when I work them out at the next step. So in the next step, I'm going to say equals, so I've got plus 2, which is just 2, plus or minus the square root of. Now, we don't want to try and hurry ourselves too much on this, so I'm not going to try and get this as a number just yet. I'm just going to get the minus 2 squared. Anything squared is positive, so that's plus 4. Be really careful with signs here. I've got a minus times a plus times a minus. Minus times a minus is a plus, so it's going to be plus. And 4 times 2 times minus 3 is 8 times 3, which is 24. So it's 4 plus 24 all over 2 times 2, which is 4. And then I simplify at the next stage. So I get 2 plus or minus the square root of 28 all over 4. And I might get away with leaving that as my solution. But this does actually simplify. Square root of 28 I'm going to give myself a right-hand margin. Simplifying the square root of 28, we've seen how we can simplify thirds. There is a square number that I can form 28 by multiplying. I can do 4 times 7 to get 28, and 4 is a square number. So it's the square root of 4 times the square root of 7, so it's 2 the square root of 7. So this 28 is twice the square root of 7. So I'm going to get equals, OK, and I'm going to get uh, 2 plus or minus twice the square root of 7, all over 4. And then, because I've got multiples of 2 on the top and the bottom, I can divide top and bottom of a fraction by the same thing. So I can divide top and bottom by 2. So I can get 1 plus or minus the square root of 7, 1 times the square root of 7, all over 2. Um, and that's in a simplified form. Sometimes I might need to give the answer with these two separated out into um, uh, a fraction plus or minus a fraction times root 7. So if I'm going to do that, well, my right-hand margin is useful again. So I've got uh, 1, let's just do 1 plus root 7 over 2. It'll be the same with the minus. So I can split a fraction with an addition on the top. I can split into 1 over 2 plus root 7 over 2. OK. So um, this can split out into 1 over 2, plus or minus, and root 7 over 2, another way of writing that is a half root 7. So either of these forms um, would be acceptable. 
depending on what the um, question asks for, it may ask for a particular one of these, in which case you've got to do that. Just going back to the top. So when you're setting out your um, solution, it's a good idea to quote the formula and it's a good idea to show the values you're putting into it. But what is absolutely essential is that you show how you've put the values in. So this here is the most important line for gaining method marks. And then do not try and go straight from that to the answer. Do put this stage in because that's going to eliminate mistakes. So that's how to use the formula to solve a quadratic.